Good morning, students. Uh, thank you for coming to the evaluation um, a debrief. And I guess it's uh, just an opportunity for us to be able to talk about the process that you've been uh, engaged in. My name is Kurt Miller, as you well know. I'm the Social Work Program Director and the primary evaluator for this process. Uh, this process started uh, several months ago, and uh, as we go throughout the presentation today, I will talk to you about uh, what your engagement was and your involvement uh, to uh, help us out with. Uh, you all should have received the packet of uh, information which includes the survey instruments uh, as well as the logic model that uh, guided the process. So I'm just going to walk us through the evaluation uh, and again thank you for taking some time out of your schedule to review this. I'd uh, just like to introduce the evaluation project to give you an overview about uh, what uh, contents were involved in the evaluation. Uh, you've been involved in uh, conversations, you understand uh, what was going on, uh, but this is sort of a recap uh, for, uh, for us uh, today. I'd like to, I'm going to uh, first talk about the, the, the description of the program, tell you a little bit about why we, why we did the evaluation and the timeliness of that. Uh, talk about the purpose of the evaluation, uh, inform you about the stakeholders, and some of the stakeholders you may not be familiar with, uh, but uh, you are the primary stakeholders, and this is one of several conversations that we're having with the, the stakeholders. Um, we'll also talk about the program evaluation standards. Uh, I will reintroduce you to the text that guided uh, the uh, formation of the evaluation, which is the program evaluation standards. Uh, we'll talk about the rationale, the application. We'll introduce you, well, not really introduce you, because you already know about this, uh, but the application of the appreciative inquiry and how that fits nicely into uh, the, the BSW advising program here. And then we'll talk about the data collection and analysis method and design. We'll dig a little bit deeper into the interview protocols and the, um, and the surveys that you completed and, and give you some rationale about that. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the data dissemin dissemination, how we are in the process of, of uh, disseminating the, the uh, information, and how we desire to use that, that uh, information to guide the continual, uh, continuous improvement uh, of the advising program here. <clears throat> we'll give a, a brief conclusion, have uh, references, and then uh, give you a time for a question and answer. Uh, I know we're short on time, but uh, uh, even if we don't get to in-person questions, you could always uh, schedule a time to, uh, to meet with me uh, uh, going forward. So um, I do have notes up here, so I might be referring to those, uh, just because I want to make sure that I, that I have uh, every, uh, everything as part of the evaluation. Um, as you all know, uh, the BSW program here at Lancaster Bible College uh, is comprised of approximately 75 students. Uh, at any given week, that, those numbers might change, but uh, that was the uh, standard set that we had as we were, uh, inter, as we were entering into this evalu evaluation phase. 75 students from all uh, levels. Uh, these are the primary stakeholders here. We're also three of the full-time faculty uh, advisors. Um, each faculty advisor has approximately 25 students that they uh, are uh, responsible for advising. Um, we also want to say that um, uh, starting in uh, the, the fall, uh, just uh, this past semester, um, we implemented what's called the appreciative advising model of, of uh, advising. Uh, this is adopted as a pilot project, um, and uh, that serves as some of the purposes of why we uh, are in uh, evaluating uh, this. Um, we also are curious about uh, the professional socialization of you all, the social work students, to the field of social work. Um, that's a social work term, professional socialization. You've heard me talk about that in classes before. You've heard us talk about that in some of our meetings. Um, and some of the primary measurements that we have throughout the program, and some of the seniors here would be able to uh, attest to that, is it's measured through the senior field internship and the exit surveys. Um, and that information is always fed back to the Council of Social Work Education, which is our primary accrediting body. Um, I'll also direct you into the uh, attention to the, um, we have the, the logic model. This will be um, uh, reviewed in detail later uh, to see where we're at, but you also have this in your handout. Uh, if, as you can see, the logic model guided the development of the evaluation project from the inputs, which include personnel, students, the resources, and the entire social work program. 
the outputs, which include some of the activities that are to, to be done uh, relating to uh, academic advising, uh, having the funding that's in, in place, uh, and ongoing improvement uh, for the advising to who's going to be participating. The program director, field director, research faculty member who is responsible for gathering the data and interpreting the data, as well as the students uh, from first to last year. There were also some small cohorts uh, that, that were, uh, participated in, in, in this uh, evaluation, uh, which included transfer students, which included a subset of first year students, as well as a subset of senior uh, last year students. Um, and also the program director, my responsibility was to ensure that, that there was institutional support and improvement. There were cert several outcomes that we had, short, medium, and long, long outcomes. Uh, the short term were the evaluation process. How are we going to be gathering the information through interview surveys and data gathering, both qualitative and quantitative, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, and also uh, about the medium outcomes is, is how do the faculty see themselves as uh, effective advisors uh, through, through this uh, uh, process, as well as how do the students perceive their satisfaction and preparedness uh, for the field of social work. Um, and then the last one is the social work program will continue to make uh, qualitative changes uh, in order to improve the, the quality advising. With a long-term outcome being that both students and faculty members report satisfaction with the quality of engagement, positive student goal attainment, successful program outcomes, as well as reaffirmation of the Council of Social Work Education, which is scheduled for 2020. It, academic advising is part of the um, um, implicit curriculum, we talk about that, uh, which is activities outside of the classroom. Um, and uh, we evaluate the students' preparedness. Some of the external factors that, that could impact our delivery of uh, advising includes the resistance to change um, by the institution, resistance to engagement uh, by individuals, uh, student enrollment, um, obviously the numbers can go up and down. The entire program context, as the, as the institution moves towards more of a university model, what does that look like for the, for the advising? Time constraints and workload considerations is always an issue uh, whenever you're considering evaluation. Two primary uh, assumptions that we have is appreciative advising is an effective means of academic advising within the social work program. Uh, that's what we're trying to look for. And then appreciative advising adds to the professional socialization of the student to the practice of social work. Uh, so that's uh, uh, sort of where we're at in terms of the description uh, of the program and uh, what we want to spend some time talking about today. So the purpose of the evaluation, why go through all this, uh, all this um, um, effort and, and work? Uh, what, is the, what is the all overall purpose? Um, by, by evaluating the approach to advising, we want to make sure the faculty advisors are actually engaged and, and, and uh, uh, mirroring or modeling uh, the, the social work um, practice to the students. We want to make sure that students are prepared with, with uh, sound social work practice principles. The two key questions um, that helps to give voice to the students uh, would be that, um, that the that, that we believe that the appreciative advising, what we were looking for is that appreciative advising uh, is an effective means to be able to help the students um, uh, develop themselves. Uh, 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 we'll talk about what uh, uh, appreciative advising looks like in, in a, later, a later conversation. But the second question is, how does appreciative advising add to the professional socialization of the student? Um, you've heard us talk about in the social work uh, program that, that what happens in the, the classroom is also a mirror about what happens out in the, in the real wor world. Uh, and so we want to make sure that, that we're also mirroring that uh, within, um, uh, within the, the social work uh, advising uh, relationship. And we also want to make sure that we're building upon the strengths of the student, the advisor, and the program. Um, this is an appreciative process, and uh, uh, we want to make sure that, that the, the strengths of you all, the strengths of the program, the strengths of the advisors are, are highlighted. Some of the stakeholders uh, that uh, were specifically instrumental in this evaluation would uh, be the faculty advisors and, and, and their role. Their role is to engage students in, in uh, conversations. Uh, there's no there's no academic 
model that's used consistently across campus. Um, so that uh, has been a, a challenge institutionally to make sure students are prepared the best way possible uh, upon graduation, but also throughout the process. Uh, the, also, the, the other primary stakeholders, and uh, as you well know, stakeholders are those individuals who have a, a vested interest in uh, the outcome of an, eva of an evaluation, or of a program, or a process. Uh, we have uh, students from first year to final year. Um, so we do want to make sure that we're covering all, all the uh, students and, and at all levels. Um, so we did consider a special subset of students who were exiting what's their, their reflection on this, as well as uh, a reflection on advising, as well as first year students. How do they begin their, uh, their, their college process? Um, we also started to talk of, uh, or included uh, focus groups, and focus groups uh, were those individuals uh, who were specifically new to the program, either transferred internally or transferred from, a, uh, from, a, from another, um, another institution. We felt that was uh, important for us to evaluate that. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that, um, uh, one of the aspects relating to uh, an evaluation and this is where I'm going to probably stay close to my notes because I want to make sure that uh, I'm reflecting this accurately, is the use of the program evaluation standards that, that are developed from the Joint Committee on Standards for Education Evaluation. Uh, these program standards uh, serve as the guiding principles uh, for uh, quality evaluation. So there's four main uh, e evaluation standards. We're going to talk about the utility standards, feasibility standards, ethics and propriety standards, as well as the accuracy standards. Uh, so first of all, the, the utility uh, standards will, will be of, uh, of the first focus. <clears throat> so the first one is the evaluator credibility. And so you think, well, we hope, we hope that you would have an um, evaluator who would be a credible, credible source uh, to evaluate. Um, I took on the role as the evaluator, the primary uh, evaluator. Uh, it was decided that because I am responsible for ensuring the overall quality of the program, I'm also attuned to the special uh, needs of the, um, of the um, Council of Social Work Education um, and the accreditation process that it would be felt, it was felt that, that uh, I would be in a position to be able to have that, that credibility with the evaluation. Also, the second one, the UT, U2 standards, uh, would be the attention to um, uh, the stakeholders, specific attention to the stakeholders, just to make sure that each student is receiving the attention that is due them uh, as a stakeholder, you, uh, as consumers of the education um, uh, capital here at, at uh, the college, it's important for you to be able to um, to, to have the, 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 the best service possible. So, so that was primary uh, for us as we were going through the evaluation. It was also important for us to uh, be aware of the relevant information. And the relevant information would be um, trends that would be um, uh, coming to the forefront uh, of, of um, uh, academic studies, social work program, changes in accreditation, um, curriculum updates. Uh, so we just want to respond. <clears throat> excuse me. Respond to the emergent needs uh, of um, that would be present themselves. Uh, um, and the last one here on the utility standards is U uh, six, and that's meaningful process and products. Um, as students and faculty rediscover, we re reinterpret, we revise our understandings of the process of advising. It's important that we process uh, the evaluation and make sure that it's meaningful and beneficial to both students uh, and, and faculty. Um, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just doing something just for doing something's sake. We want to make sure that it was uh, uh, applicable to, to uh, uh, what was before us. So the next uh, program evaluation standards to look at are the feasibility standards. Uh, the first one is the project management, and, and these standards uh, speak to the logistical and the administration uh, requirements. Um, there was a whole lot of, uh, of uh, uh, oversight uh, for the evaluation, a lot of pieces to be able to put together and make sure that, that uh, they were um, uh, working as, as desired. Um, some of the changing relationships uh, between the advisor and the advisee uh, was, was central to, to managing uh, the, the logistics. 
uh, changing from a, a model that we really didn't have any type of, of structure in terms of our advising to much more of a structured, intentional way of, of interacting between, of, of encouraging interaction between the, the faculty advisors and, and the students. Um, the second one was the practical procedures. We wanted to be responsive to the needs of the stakeholders um, and making sure that the evaluation itself was practical, that you could do something as a result of uh, this evaluation, that we could go back and say, during 2016, all the surveys, all the, all the interviews, all, everything that we participated in actually had a desired impact and, and, uh, and, and improved the quality of life uh, for students and faculty members. And, and that information was outlined throughout, throughout our process. Uh, and the last one there, the contextual viability. Big words, but uh, basically what that means is that acad academic advising within the social work program, um, as we undergo changes, that it's important for us to understand that, that, um, that the context sort of dictates some of the relationships uh, that advisors and advisees have, but also to ensure the fidelity to the uh, appreciative advising model. That was important to make sure uh, that, that we as faculty advisors uh, were uh, modeling that as well as encouraging that uh, because it is an appreciative process. Um, and to use this as an opportunity to possibly uh, provide an overall institutional change to the advising uh, that students uh, undergo here. Uh, and the third uh, program evaluation standard would be the area of ethics and propriety standards. Uh, and let me just take a moment to talk about the ethics. Ethics, um, as you all know, as social work students, we talk about ethics in every class. Um, uh, whenever you go through a process of evaluation, we have to make sure that we are uh, ethically interpreting uh, standards as well as ethically interacting with one another and ethically gathering the information. Um, that's, that's part of, part of what is important uh, within the d dealing with human capital and, and the human, um, um, human process is to make sure that we're at interacting uh, in an ethical way. And so the propriety standards speak to uh, the area of ethics. So the first one to talk about, you'll recognize the language, is human rights and respect. It mirrors our social work uh, core values of uh, um, respecting the um, value and the dignity and worth of, of indivi individuals, as well as the importance of human relationships. So, so respecting the rights of those involved was crucial to, to what we want to do, as well as uh, modeling that through the evaluation was important. The second one is clarity and fairness. Uh, we wanted to make sure that all the voices were at the table, that uh, while um, uh, this was interpreted as more of a democratic process, that the input was important, uh, there were some considerations that uh, uh, we just couldn't um, make. For example, if you didn't like the time when we were having the interviews, uh, we couldn't really change that. Um, well, because we wanted to make sure that it was fair for the majority of, of individuals. Um, it's important to consider the communication with those involved, um, making sure that we're clear with what we're doing as well as fair. Uh, some of the, the uh, consents that we had you fill out, some of the, the, um, the informed consents, the, the uh, right to not participate, uh, some of that information was, was uh, provided to you um, and you had a choice of that. Uh, and the last one is there is uh, transparency and full disclosure. We've tried to model that throughout the whole process of talking about at F's every step along the way, the website that we developed for uh, updates about the crucial information, um, as well as uh, this of one, is one of many presentations that we're doing uh, campus-wide um, to be able to talk about the evaluation process, just to have a, a standard of full transparency and disclosure. Uh, modeling sound uh, social work practice. And the last program evaluation standard uh, would be what's called the accuracy standard. Um, most of this has to do with uh, the way that we manage the information, how we maintain confidentiality, again, core value from social work, um, and then apply the, the uh, fidelity of the uh, appreciative, uh, appreciative advising uh, model um, in, in the advising. Um, so the first one, A5, has to do with information management, uh, making sure that we're maintaining quality procedures with the um, utmost respect for confidentiality um, and involving protecting the, the data provided by the surveys and, and interviews. 
And the second one is sound design and analysis. Applying logic through sound design and analysis using qualitative and quantitative data uh, was maintained, uh, lending to the credibility of positive outcomes for student advising. So let's get more into the, the meat of the evaluation process. Uh, we did use what was called a uh, model of uh, application of appreciative inquiry. Uh, over here you can see the, um, and on your handouts you have the, the appreciative inquiry process. Discover, dream, design, and deliver. Uh, um, and you can see the questions associated with, there. It, that, with that. It is a strengths-based inquiry model. Um, Preskill and Grindle uh, referred to it as a principle of what gives life. Uh, the evaluation was guided to what gives life to a problem. So it starts with what is going well in the program and builds uh, upon that. Um, it's also uh, uh, appreciative inquiry uh, from Cooper Ryder, Whitney, and Stavros, as well as Whitney and Tristan Bloom. It talks about the 4D model, and those, um, those references are um, available for you uh, at the end of your, your presentation. Uh, they talk about discover, and a question that they say, or a statement that, that uh, they have as part of that stage is appreciate, appreciate what is. Um, so when we're starting uh, the evaluation process, we just wanted to go through a time of appreciating what is, uh, what is in existence already. Dream, imagine what might be. Uh, that guides, sort of guides along with the logic model, guides the, the uh, evaluation process. Uh, design, determine what should be, and then destiny, create, uh, create uh, what will be. Uh, and that's sort of the stage of where we're at, is, is the continuing to uh, refine uh, for a sustainable future. It parallels nicely with the model that we've uh, adopted as our advising model, which is the appreciative advising uh, model. Um, the National a Academic Advising Association uh, sets the standard for advising. Um, however, there is really no required uh, standard. There is no, no required way of providing academic advising in, uh, um, um, in college university life. Uh, but we've adopted the appreciative ad advising model, which is a 6D model, which is a little bit different. Uh, and we've introduced these con uh, concepts to you before. You've seen them uh, in written material as, as you go through advising. And uh, want to review them again, just to make sure that we're on the right page. Uh, in this model, we start with the, the D of disarm. Uh, disarm is that you put the students at ease as they transition into academic advising, most likely in line with the first year students or transfer students. The second stage is, or second phase, is the discover, where we listen to the students' unique narrative and past positive impacts. Uh, what was going well? How was learning? Um, how did you embrace learning uh, in, the, in the past? Um, and then we go into a dream. Uh, where students share their hopes and dreams for their careers and their lives. Typically happens after you build that trust and rapport with your advisor. May happen your first, first year, but most likely into your, your second year where you're developing that relationship there. Uh, the, the fourth stage is design, where you and your, um, your, your the advisor, a student and the, the advisor, would actually co-create a plan to convert students' aspirations from dreams to reality. Um, it's similar to the process that we talk about with, with our, uh, as we engage our, our clients in services, is developing a plan of what do they want to address uh, in, in their life. Uh, the, the fifth stage is deliver, where we express confidence and collaboration in the student's ability to accomplish their goals. Uh, at this time, we're your cheerleader. We're going to provide opportunities for you to, to uh, soar and, and uh, fly high uh, in, in your life. Uh, and the last one is don't settle. That's where we raise the bar of expectations with an insatiable desire to continuously improve, encouraging that continued uh, improve. So those are the six categories, disarm, discover, dream, design, deliver, don't settle. Uh, you can go on uh, the, uh, the website, look at uh, the Appreciative Advising Institute, uh, which uh, sort of guides the process of, of what we're doing. Um, and so uh, that's sort of the framework of what we're providing here. Talk about the data collection and the analysis methods. Uh, we went through the process where we <clears throat> interviewed students. We interviewed BSW students across all levels. We interviewed uh, the faculty ad advisors. We uh, developed focus groups of students. Uh, first year students uh, are primarily on the, the, the disarm phase, and last year students are, are most likely on the don't settle phase. 
Um, then we use the appreciative inventory. At the beginning of every academic year, uh, we provide you with an opportunity to, to uh, um, uh, complete this appreciative in inventory, well, uh, which has been quantified by the Appreciative Advising Institute, and that helps us guide uh, the, um, uh, the measurement of, of uh, how students are doing uh, periodically, and that's on an annual basis. Uh, we also started using, uh, some of you uh, may not have gotten to it yet, uh, it's an evolving document and evolving process, the degree qualifications profile. Um, primarily we're focusing at this time on the exiting students, uh, and so we're going to continue to use that, that uh, information. Um, and so the, we went through the process of uh, analyzing the data. Myself, uh, working in conjunction with uh, uh, Professor Dintz, who is the, the research faculty, uh, we will be uh, operating uh, and identifying and gathering the information and in interpreting uh, that, that data for, for program evaluation. So I want to talk about the interview protocol. <clears throat> the interview protocol, uh, which if, uh, Push here, hopefully that'll come up. Yeah, right here. This is also on uh, the student, web, student portal website, so you can see this, but you also have it in your packet. Uh, when we talk about the interview protocol for students, and then we have an interview protocol for faculty. Uh, these questions were in line with, with uh, the appreciative inquiry, um, and so you, you have those in front of you. I'm not gonna stand here and read them all. Uh, but uh, the questions were identified in order to uh, help uh, students uh, build upon what is going well for them, um, specifically with them as a student as well as in their study of social work. Uh, the, the questions here in the interview protocol, both for the students as well as for the faculty uh, members, are what is the effectiveness of the appreciative advising and how does the appreciative advising add to the professional socialization of the student. Um, the appreciative inquiry process lays the groundwork for subsequent uh, interviews. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of those, um, the benefits of, of that. Um, the next one is the survey that we use. We, we had two surveys. We had a sur survey for the student and a survey for uh, the faculty. Again, uh, answering the question, asking the question of effectiveness of appreciative advising, and then the professional socialization to social work. Um, so let's just see these. Uh, you can, again, you have them as part of your survey. Uh, this was uh, the first one. The interview protocol was the qualitative. Those were interviews that, that uh, uh, we recorded and we kept um, uh, as, uh, uh, for data management. Uh, so if anyone is interested in, uh, in going back and reviewing those, we have that information. But the uh, surveys were more the quantitative. As you know, they're uh, more the Likert scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Uh, questions of my academic advisor makes personal uh, connections with me. Oh, I don't know why that's not working. Um, let's go down here, there you go. There we go. Uh, and then all, all the way down to uh, an area for, for comments. So we have that, we also have, that's for the students, we also have the faculty, um, again in line with uh, making sure that we're responding to the, uh, the, the two questions. Uh, the faculty uh, were to, to respond to the advisor's preparedness for advising, ability to engage in the appreciative advising model, and then engage the students in the advising uh, relationship. Okay. And again, that information still is all available for, for you. Um, and we also provided some, some uh, uh, materials on the website for you to be able to access uh, that information. Okay. How did we give you the information? How did we uh, disseminate this information? How do we choose to use this? Again, the, the, the goal is for continuous quality improvement. And so if we revisit the logic model. Come on. Revisit the logic model there. We have all this data coming. We have the inputs, outputs, all the data coming in here, and the short outcome, the medium outcomes, and then uh, making sure that the long-term range is uh, uh, outcome is to uh, to ensure that students are reporting satisfaction within the uh, within the, the program. So if we go back to this. Uh, 
We want to make sure that we're responding to the, um, the program standards that were outlined. Uh, we have uh, four primary uh, standards that we looked at. Uh, project management, ensuring that uh, the evaluator, myself, is still qualified to be able to do this. Uh, make sure that we are rec uh, responsive and inclusive mm, to, me, to, to make sure that we have a comprehensive, that we're capturing everything as part of the advising process. Uh, we're transparent and, and uh, fully disclosing. This is a model of that. Uh, as well as we're handling the data with extreme caution uh, and managing the, the information. Um, <clears throat> several reports uh, that are, um, uh, we want to make sure that we have, before I go there, instrumental and conceptual use of, of the data. Um, so instrumental use has to do with the direct use for the decision making, how we're going to use this, this data, this uh, evaluation to make choices for the future. Um, uh, as well as conceptual use. Uh, how are we changing attitudes? How are we changing the thinking? How are we changing any type of, of knowledge? And that was uh, by an article by Lawrence Gullickson and Toll in 2007. Uh, so we also disseminated this information, made some intentional decisions about how do we inform the, the larger LBC community. We have a full report, anyone can access that full report, um, and that's on, on our website, and then students, uh, you're uh, eligible to, to participate in or review that information. We also have an executive summary that will be uh, provided to the uh, institutional entities who we believe would be uh, benefit uh, from, from that. Um, informative PowerPoint presentations, hopefully you found this presentation uh, informative, and. Um, is telling you information about what you were able to participate in in order to, to again, continuously improve uh, academic advising here at LBC for future, uh, future students. Um, and then uh, fact sheets have been available for, for public use, mostly uh, uh, centered around uh, the benefits of uh, transfer students and, and uh, the benefits of, of academic advising in conjunction with career planning. So, so we provided some of those those uh, fact sheets uh, for your um, uh, uh, information, and you have access to, to all of those. All of this information is also placed on, on our website as well. So that's a lot of information that, that I provided to you. Um, and I found a couple quotes here that I thought were um, was important to, to have a big picture about what, what we intend to, intended to do here uh, today through this evaluation project. Uh, for teachers as well as students, the most effective evaluation comes from someone who sits beside us and helps us grow. Um, so, so helping us grow, helping us uh, change what, um, uh, how we're currently living. The uh, second one is from Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So if we're continuing to, uh, to do uh, what we uh, need to do um, and uh, what um, we repeatedly do, uh, strive for excellence, that's going to be important. And the last, last one, uh, which I love this quote from Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change, uh, change the world. Um, so just in concluding, um, ongoing use of the evaluation will, will commence upon the review of the student and faculty interviews as well as the surveys. Um, we need to make sure that we're uh, continuously evaluating uh, this process. Um, we experience some flexibility within, within the advising. It's not a, an exact science uh, because of the human in interactions. Um, uh, but um, we understand that this is a complex system and uh, we, we exist to be able to make sure that we're moving in uh, the positive direction. Um, there's a continuous state of flux with uh, academic advising uh, but it's crucial to expect the unexpected and incorporate the changes uh, as they uh, emerge. Um, last slide is uh, references of uh, everything that I talked about uh, today. Feel free to, to look for those. Um, and then I think we're, we ran out of time. Uh, we do not have any um, specific time, a large group format for question and answers, but if you want to meet with me after this presentation, I'd be glad to, to talk to you. Again, contact information. Um, the, my email as well as my phone number. Thank you for your time.